Biden a shot. But uh, the Democrats are not, it's, it's not just him, it's a party, it's a platform. Take a look at the pla platform. Look at the governor of Virginia. Look at what he did. He did an execution after, you know, normally they talk about late term. His wasn't late term. His was the baby side. was born, and then you can execute the baby. That's the Democrats, and that's Biden. President Donald Trump speaking about abortion and the 2020 election today with EWTN's own Raymond Arroyo, host of The World Over. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Tracy Sable. In a wide-ranging interview, managing editor and host of The World Over, Raymond Arroyo talks with President Donald Trump about some of the biggest issues facing our nation. Raymond Arroyo joins me now with the preview. Raymond, so good to see you. Thanks so much for coming on. Pleasure to see you, Tracy. Thank you for having me. Well, Raymond, as we both know, it's been a very turbulent time with the protests and civil unrest and, of course, the pandemic. When you talked to the president, did you see something especially important that seemed to be on his mind? Well, he's very focused on the disunity he's seeing in the country, the destruction of private property. So safety is one big issue, I think, for him. The other part, and it's a key plank that he ran on and I think was so important to him as a, as a president, is the state of this economy. And because of the pandemic and the shutdowns, it's obviously put a lot of industry and businesses in the cooler. He's hoping to revive them and our prospects economically moving into this fourth quarter. That seems to be where his eye is, uh, despite the diversity of policies and issues before him. Well, Raymond, as you know, the country is waiting for a Supreme Court decision on abortion. Mm -hmm. Did the pro-life cause come up in your conversation? It did indeed. I asked him, Tracy, there's a lot of chatter in the evangelical and Catholic world try, attempting to expand the meaning of the word pro-life. What does it mean to be pro-life? And, uh, you know, look, this goes back to the old seamless garment uh, argument that Cardinal Bernadin put forward 30 or 40 years ago, where all of these issues are pro-life. Everything is pro-life. And, of course, some say, well, wait a minute. The life issues really are euthanasia and abortion. Those are the, those are the life issues. Then, the, then it goes from there. And, yes, everything would then be pro-life if you don't define them that way. And Trump reacted, uh, reacted rather violently when I, when I pushed him on some suggesting that Joe Biden might be more pro-life than Donald Trump. Oh, looking forward to that and hearing more in your interview mm -hmm. about that. I know we've also seen violence against a growing list of memorials to mm -hmm. historical mm -hmm. figures, uh, some of them quite surprising, including statues of St. Junipero Serra, Ulysses S. Grant, and Christopher Columbus. What are the president's thoughts on this? Well, he broke some news with us on this, uh, Tracy, and I want everybody to watch tonight at 8 and 10. Uh, he will speak about a new initiative that he plans to undertake to protect these statues. It's the first time he's talked about it, and obviously it is a deep wound for so many people across the country watching heroes like Junipero Serra, who actually taught, loved, and nurtured the indigenous people in California, built the missions. Uh, General Grant, who brought an end to the Civil War, they're ripping his monument down. This is a strafing of American history that we're seeing and beyond, really. The, the, we've got the Spanish embassy now complaining that so many of, of their heroes are being taken down in places like San Francisco. Cervantes, you know, the great uh, Shakespeare of Spain, the man who wrote Don Quixote, he was also a veteran and was himself a slave for five years. They defaced his stature. So this has to stop. The president has a means of attempting to make that happen. Well, over the last week, in the wake of the Supreme Court's Bostock decision, we've had calls from a number of people, including elected officials, for the diminishment of religious liberty. Where does the president stand on this issue? Well, I, I think he was a bit dismayed by that uh, Supreme Court decision. Of course, uh, Justice Gorsuch wrote the majority opinion there. If you read the piece, and I've never seen this in a Supreme Court decision before, where it seems the ruling almost encourages more litigation before the Supreme Court, where it says, look, there's a ministerial uh, uh, carve-out here for churches, but we don't know if that applies to schools or uh, girls in competitive sports. And he says, but we'll take care of all of that in forthcoming cases. So I guess this will all be seen, the limits of this court decision, and do LGBT rights trump religious liberties? This is a First Amendment right. I don't know how you're going to work out that clash, but a clash is indeed coming.
All right. Well, thank you, Raymond. Raymond Arroyo, managing editor and the host of World Over. Thank you so much. Can't wait for your full interview tonight. Thank you.